always does. As I I have a checkered past. It's included living in a mental hospital, battling addiction and homelessness, and being trapped in a corporate job that was sucking the soul out of me day after day. By any stretch of the imagination, I should be living in a prison cell rather than Malibu. But that's not my story. At 37, I learned about the law of attraction and that I could rewrite my story anytime I wanted to, and so can you. Now I'm leveling up and going back to my earliest dreams of being a singer and actress despite all the odds being against me. I'm a regular chick who was living a regular life until I learned that I could dare to be extraordinary. And I'm gonna do that and you're gonna watch and be inspired to do the same thing. This is Momstar. private corner. <laughs> um, um, getting in character to be me. You better not text anything embarrassing. That's all going to be public. I'm zooming right in on your phone. No, it's just pictures I took. See? Oh. There's you. <laughs> Five minutes. Are you recording now? Oh, wait, what, 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 what did you say? So Try we're here before Lima's Philadelphia yeah. show and yeah, everybody's yeah, really excited. You can hear a lot yeah. of people moving around and talking. Uh, it is almost six o'clock and the show starts at seven. So we're setting everything up, getting ready for the live stream. Lemu's in hair and makeup right now. We've tested everything. Everything is ready to go. And I know that she's gonna nail it tonight. Go Lemu! Some of the Lewis kids? Oh, okay. I guess their dad. I didn't see him. Are Gabby and my mom here and Claudia? I did not see them yet. Oh, that's weird. I thought they were coming over to get it. Oh, yeah, good. good. Your mom is looking for a co parent. It's been like 100,000 years. It's a little tight, but I don't think it'll pull out. Don't go out until we give you a okay from the street. Yes. 
glad that you're here. I'd love to tell you my story. I'd love to tell you how I got here. I, I have to go back a little ways. No, there was anything else we could do. I didn't know that there was anything else I could do. And I didn't know why nothing was changing until this one weekend, I went down to see my mom for the Labor Day holiday. And she had this book on her shelf that, like, people have been telling me about this book. It was called The Secret. Oprah was talking about this book. I was going to read that book. I was going to see if maybe there's anything to that book. And so I opened it up, and I read it, and I was like, I mean, it was like, I was just voracious. I was just devouring it. I read it in like a day. I mean, Limu has such an arc in her life from the beginning of the story to the end of the story, which is not over, but it's such an arc. Like, you're going to get something out of this that is going to have value and is going to make you think about what you're doing. What are you doing? I had had this, this boyfriend, see, who I thought I was going to marry. I really did. Only he was in the military, and so it was kind of a weird relationship and kind of hard to do the whole long-distance thing. And so, so then this one day, I called him up, and I was like, all right, I really want to see you. I can't take it. I want to come. I'm going to visit you for your birthday. And he was like, yeah, no, I don't think you should. And I was like, no, 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 it's cool, it's cool. I can pay for it this time. It's completely fine. He was like, I'm getting married next month. I was like, uh, are you in love with her? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, bye. And I hung up and just was like, no, 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 no. No, like everything, my whole, my whole plan, my whole, every idea that I had about love, it was just no. No. I have a little boy and I do theater and I act and stuff, but I never think about how it's impacting him. Um, and also the idea of like not giving up on your dreams is what the message that I'm showing my child. So. Now I'm just kind of inspired to do more and to dream bigger and to really go for the things that I want and desire and hope that he'll follow that example. And I was going to do this. I was going to do this. I was going to get it. I felt like I had seen it. I felt like in the audition, I had seen it. This is mine. This is mine. I mean, like, where else did it come from other than that it's mine, right? I went up and I went into the audition room. And Patty's sitting there, and John's, our musical director, is sitting there. And I'm like, okay, 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 okay. And she's like, baby, you all right? Scared? And I was like, no, no, Miss Patty. I'm not, I'm not scared. I'm not. It's just like, it's like adrenaline. Like, I feel like my whole life has been leading up to this moment or something. And she's like, well, baby, you better just claim it. I was like, oh, I'm claiming it, Miss Patty. I'm claiming it. She's like, okay, what are you going to say? And I said, I'm going to sing Hero. And I didn't realize it when I, when I picked the song. It was another one. It was another one. As I sang the words, I realized it was another one. There's a hero When you look inside your heart You don't have to be afraid Of what you are There's an answer 
If you reach into your soul, then the soul. like pursuing your dreams, but also like applying it practically to your life. If you want to live a life of abundance, you need to live a life of abundance. Who said that? If I'm, it's gonna, I'm gonna, it's gonna be fine. We're gonna have, yep, buy it. Okay, it's done. I bought it. So I'm going to work the next day, figuring I can always return it or refuse delivery or whatever. Like, I'm still kind of thinking about it. But I'm, like, really in my heart thinking, honestly, if you want to live a life of abundance, you need to live a life of abundance. That's what I believe. So I go into work that next day, and the project manager on the project pulls me to the side, and she says, we need your help. Claire is supposed to go to London in three weeks to train on our system, and she just informed us that she's afraid of flying. So I know it's really short notice, and I know you would need a couple of weeks to get up to speed with the system, but would you be willing to fly to London and train them? Yes, I would. Like, just like that. Three more ways to work. I've known her for a good stretch of time, but I didn't know some of those pieces. Um, so it was kind of cool to hear that. I was really welled up in tears each time she sang. Um, definitely struck a chord. My dreams are all of you, and in my dreams I sing, I sing for you. I sing for you, I sing for you, until my life is through, I sing for you, I sing for you. learned this summer that I don't want to be an actress as a job. I learned that I really enjoy telling my story and I learned that this formula of figure out what it is you want to do be open to the resources coming to make it possible and be willing to do the work works. It's really good because we can we can actually have like a, a real conversation, a real about, conversation it. about it. This is what I always did with my old theater company. Like every time we finished a show, we had this post-mortem where we'd sit down and be like, uh, oh, this didn't work. Or like, oh my god, this worked. There's what we can learn from from it. I feel like this summer was a huge success. Did I feel this was a successful summer? As far as a one-woman show, I would say, yeah, it was it was successful. Three different venues. We were in Burbank. We were in Denver. We were in Philadelphia, and uh, it got done. So to me, that's it, like a huge win. But um, there's always room for improvement. W was it stressful, like on your family? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, maybe on a, the family as a whole. I don't feel like it was a stress on on you and me. Well, not on our relationship. I mean, I, I actually felt like, if anything, it was, it like, not that it strengthened our relationship, because it didn't need strengthening, but like, it was, re I really felt like I could lean on you. Yeah, no. <laughs> She's one of those types of people you see, like, in the, in the, in the circus, where they're, they're spinning the plates, <clears throat> and, and she's really good at spinning about 18 plates, and that's kind of like, and she functions in the, in the realm of about, 12 to 18 plates. If you add that 19th plate, then they'll all come crashing down. And and so, like, one of my jobs is to make sure that, is, that we're not at that 19th yeah, plate. Yeah, she stayed focused. It surprised me, I have to say. I mean, I, I when Limu and I started working together on the project, like, I didn't really know her that well. And I, I know that most people couldn't have handled that load. So like watching her like expertly, graciously navigate like her consulting business and doing this 
like web series that we're doing and creating this one woman show. Oh, and she also has four kids and like <laughs> that, that surprised me. I'm impressed. I was impressed. <laughs> I really felt like I could lean on you. Like, I felt like it was really stressful personally. I, mean, I think it was more st stressful, like, who's going to show up, who's not going to, you know, who's not going to show up, you know, that, that, that type of thing. You mean the audience in terms of yeah. audience? Yeah. Well, and also because, like, with the show in Philadelphia, there was a lot of cost involved for, like, having the whole crew there, which was good. I don't regret that, but there was a lot of cost involved with that. There was a lot of cost involved with the video production, which we, you know, did the GoFundMe, and we kind of hoped that that would offset that, but it really didn't. In fact, I don't even know what the final number was on that. Um, so sitting the out there, I'll have to check on that. <laughs> sitting out there, yeah. eight thousand dollars. No, no. So um, yes, <laughs> woo -hoo, we did it. Um, but like, what was also happening was, you know, I had that client who was scaling back and then eventually rolling me off the project. So I had like the added expenses of the show combined with the diminishing revenue with, with not knowing what was going to come in its place. And so I think that yeah, no, was no, probably no, the no, most no. stressful part of yeah, it. Yeah, no, that was stressful. I'm not going into it thinking this needs to happen, you know, because I feel very much detached from the outcome and that I'm on a path. And so it may be that the the point of the show was just to do the show. And so that it may be the next thing is is what's supposed to happen, not necessarily that much more with the show. I don't know. I mean, I have such respect for, you know, actors who have been at their craft for their entire careers. Well, the 18 plates take up a lot of time. And but one of those plates need to be, you know, just enjoying life and just enjoying living in California. You see a light at the end of the tunnel now? I mean, you're talking, I'm asking that question. This tunnel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this tunnel. It's kind of like, literally, it's kind of like riding across country. Like, you know, all right, hold on a second. Max, right. yeah, really. this is not going to work, OK? This behind the scenes is about my being willing to be open and vulnerable and show, like, the real real so that any excuses that somebody might have when they're sitting out there um, can be kind of put to rest. You know what I mean? That I'm not, you know, this is, this is, a, this is a, this is a different kind of reality how show. Did, how did you feel physically during the summer with all of this going on? I mean, uh, I did not like being on stage this heavy at all. I didn't like looking at the video footage and seeing myself, you know, at this weight. Um, I wasn't taking as good care of myself, you know, like when we were traveling, kind of no holds barred, we were like eating what the hell ever, you know, and <laughs> all of us, all of us really. And so I like went into the summer, went into you know, my birthday already wanting to lose 60 pounds. And then I came out of it now needing to lose 80 pounds, you know, which is so, yeah, that, that's good. So. Um, I'm excited about this, like this health and wellness development because that's like a really important part of my life too. And we get to focus on it in season two. Oh my gosh, I am so excited about Limu's like health and wellness goals because I, I mean, health and fitness is such an important part of my life and I love eating healthy and I love like working out and it's just cool to get to like watch someone go through this transformation. One of the things Laura really wants me to focus on and wants me to be an example of to people is prioritizing doing it in a way that is positive. Mm. And that is about like making peace with food and making peace with my body instead of in a way like anybody could, you know, do a whole segment about, you know, punishing deprivation-based way, losing 60 pounds or 80 pounds or whatever. Biggest loser type stuff. Biggest loser yeah. type stuff, which works. But as a lot of people know who've like followed, like I certainly have read articles about like the long term of some of those people and a lot of them gain weight back because if it's not a change like internally and like making peace, really making peace with like food and uncovering like what's at the core of making those decisions that are really at odds and out of alignment with what your goals are and what you really want, then it doesn't stick. Like this is my real journey, you know, from there to there. And I'm trying to 
expose myself and be vulnerable so that I can inspire and encourage and, and, and help to, you know, give courage to other women who are here. Next time on The Making of a Mom Star. Let's get started with Limu McGill. It's a family reunion. It's crazy, Tifa getting knocked out. You know, people are running around the pool and I, I don't know what I'm doing. Right, but, you know, so, yeah. yeah. So, it's a superstar. Uh, I can take it. Yeah, I can take it. That constructive criticism. You've been my daughter for 16 years. If I can't take it right now, I'm a joke. I mean, parts of it were kind of hard to, hard to Live, yeah. yeah, and you know, especially part of you know, Amelia, the part about uh, Amelia. Yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>